Um, good morning. Today we're going to do some repeated reading. Um, we're going to read The Ballad of Birmingham, written by Dudley Randall. He wrote this in response to the Birmingham church bombings. It's a narrative poem. I'm going to have you read it silently to yourself, and then I will read it for you, and then we will read parts of it together. We're going to be doing repeated reading to, to get the fluency down of reading the poem. I'm going to read the poem one time through. Okay? Listen carefully for when I stop and start. Um, and then I'm going to have you read a couple stanzas um, doing echo reading, in which I will read it, I will stop, and then you'll repeat what I've read. Okay? Ballad of Birmingham, on the bombing of a church in Birmingham, Alabama, 1963. Mother dear, may I go downtown instead of out to play and march the streets of Birmingham in a freedom march today? No, baby, no, you may not go, for the dogs are fierce and wild. And clubs and hoses, guns and jails aren't good for a little child. But mother, I won't be alone. Other children will go with me and march the streets of Birmingham to make our country free. No, baby, no, you may not go, for I feel those guns will fire. But you may go to church instead and sing in the children's choir. She has combed and brushed her night dark hair and bathed rose petal sweet and drawn white gloves on her small brown hands and white shoes on her feet. The mother smiled to know that her child was in the sacred place, but that smile was the last smile to come upon her face. For when she heard the explosion, her face grew wet and wild. She raced to the streets of Birmingham, calling for her child. She clawed through bits of glass and brick, then lifted out a shoe. Oh, here's the shoe my baby wore. The baby, where are you? Okay, now do you know a little bit more closely what this poem might be about? More so than mom was afraid of her child. What do you think happened to the little girl? Xavier? She died in an explosion. She died in an explosion. Where was that explosion? In the church. In the church. How many of you are familiar with the Birmingham <clears throat> church bombing that occurred in, in the 60s? Okay, it killed four little girls. It was one of the um, most gruesome things that happened in the civil rights movement because um, of the death of the four children in such a sacred place. You know, you go to a church to be safe. Um, and it was also broadcasted on the news. People were sitting in their living rooms and watching this happen in, in Birmingham, um, which had not yet reached where other parts of the United States were, um, were not having these, these problems that Birmingham was still having. And so they were shocked by what was going on, and it caused a lot of um, things to go into effect in the D.C. laws to be passed and, and also um, caused a lot of riots around the country. And then Martin Luther King, um, of course, came out and, offered to do peaceful protests, and we're going to go a little more about what happened um, that led up to all these events of the Civil Rights Movement, and then talk about some prominent African Americans today. Um, like I said, in the repeated reading, we'll do the echo reading, I'm going to read uh, the first stanza, and then I'd like you to repeat after me, nice and loud so we can hear you, um, stopping and starting at the same points I do. So as I'm reading it, make sure you're following with your eyes so you can see where I stop and start. Ballad of Birmingham, the bombing of the church in Birmingham, Alabama. Okay, we're going to repeat the first stanza once I read it. Mother dear, may I go downtown instead of out to play and march the streets of Birmingham in a freedom march today? Mother dear, may I go downtown instead of out to play and march the streets of Birmingham to march the freedom march today? Okay, great. Some of you are right on. Some of you are a little off. So I'm going to do it one more time, a little louder. Make sure you speak clearly. Okay, almost if like you were addressing an audience, so you would speak up. Okay. Mother dear, may I go downtown instead of out to play and march the streets of Birmingham in a freedom march today. Mother dear, may I go downtown instead of out to play and march the streets of Birmingham in a freedom march today. Okay, that was much better. Could you hear the difference? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, second stanza. We're going to do the same thing, okay? <coughs> Listen as I say it. Follow along with your eyes. Notice where I stop and start. No, baby, no, you may not go. For the dogs are fierce and wild, and clubs and hoses, guns and jails aren't good for a little child. No, baby, no, you may not go. The dogs are fierce and wild, and clubs and hoses, guns and jails aren't good for a little child. Okay, good. Good, there are some people off, but I think the majority of you had it. We're going to do one more stanza together. Let's do the second stanza again. After I speak, 
and say the stanza. Go ahead and repeat it back to me. After that, you're going to turn to the person next to you, okay? And each of you are going to read this second stanza to each other one at a time, okay, waiting for the first person to stop, okay? Um, no, baby, no, you may not go, for the dogs are fierce and wild, and clubs and hoses, guns and jails aren't good for a little child. No, baby, no, you may not go. Okay, very good. Okay, turn to your partner and take turns saying it, please. Not go, for the dogs are fierce and wild, and clubs and hoses, guns and gel aren't good for the child. But mother, I won't be alone. Other children will go with me, and Marshall Streets of Birmingham to make our country free. No, baby, no, you may not go. For those guns will fire, but you may go to church instead and sing the children's choir. She has combed and brushed her night dark hair and bathed rose petals sweet and drawn white gloves on her small brown hands and white shoes on her feet. No, baby, no, you may not go. For I fear those guns will fire one, but you may go to church instead of singing the church's part. Okay, thank you. You all did a really nice job. What we just did was echo reading and um, repeated reading. I read, and then you repeated after me. You did a very, very nice job. Then you turned to each other and did the repeated or echo reading to each other. Um, the reason we do that is for fluency and comprehension. Um, the more times you read something, the better you're going to comprehend it. And the more times um, you repeat something and do the echo reading off each other, the more fluent you become at reading that. And, of course, fluency um, is when not only can you read, but read at a, at a fluent rate where it flows at the, at the right speed while able to comprehend at the same time.